Today we'll be talking about a tool used in presenting stand-up that, in my opinion, needs to disappear. This. The audience cutaway has become a staple in a lot of stand-up, and I hate it. It seems like such a small thing, but when I'm watching a comedian and they cut from this... The Seven of Diamonds! Sorry, my mind's playing tricks with me. ...to this... <laughs> Ugh. In this video, we'll talk about what exactly is wrong with the cutaway, and offer some suggestions on how to replace it. First off, you may be thinking, what's the problem with a cutaway? If a joke is funny, show some people laughing at it, right? Well, not really. I guess a good way of describing it is you don't trust it. You don't believe the audience is reacting to that joke in that moment. It doesn't feel like a genuine reaction to the material because it isn't. It's a pretty well-known secret that cutaways, particularly by big mainstream comedians and companies, are often pre-recorded or filmed at random, and can be used to manipulate how the viewer responds to the material. I've got a thing I'm obsessed with in how you film stand-up, right? Which is that I don't like the false rhythm of cuts, like yeah. where you go to audience responses. Yeah, yeah. And particularly transparent on things like uh, Live at the Apollo, they do choose very specific audience reaction shots to try and change the way the audience at home are receiving uh -huh. the so what, material. For example, here Michael McIntyre tells a pretty dubious joke about leaving his wife to sit with a 19 year old. You know, this person has big hair, I don't know them smelly person here, let's not sit over there. Hot 19 year old, can I sit there darling and you sit over there? But don't worry, they cut to a shot of two middle aged women chuckling, so you know it's fine. <laughs> Note that I'm not saying all cutaways have been edited this cynically, but that doesn't change the fact that when I see a special cut from this... I would never hit a woman. Even if she had a knife, or a stutter... ...to this... <laughs> I clench up. I feel like I'm being cheated or tricked, and it pulls me out of the moment. And considering how contrived cutaways are, it's surprising how often they're still used. So, what needs to change? How can you get the audience involved in the material in a way that feels authentic? Well, firstly, are there any examples of cutaways being used effectively? Yeah, there are. Chelsea Peretti's special, One of the Greats, uses really funny cutaways that also comment on how staged they actually are. <laughs> Aziz Ansari's special, Right Now, films cutaways at a distance and from unobtrusive angles, and lacks the clear manipulation you see in a lot of other specials. Uh, most of the time. Bo Burnham uses what is personally my favourite cutaway in the finale of Make Happy, where instead of cutting to an individual or a group of people, he cuts to the whole audience. I know very little about anything, but what I do know is that if you can live your life without an audience, you should do it. It's a really genuine and innovative moment. But these are exceptions and not the rule. We need something a little more concrete. How can you capture the audience's response in a way that feels completely authentic? Well, the most obvious thing to do is get both the joke and the reaction in the same shot. I'm not quite sure when this happened, but so many comedians, particularly ones using the Netflix model, shoot their specials on these giant platforms above the audience, where there's no chance to get a reaction unless you cut to them directly. So, mix up your stage. Rami Youssef and Gerard Carmichael's HBO specials were shot on circular stages, so you can see the audience responding in real time. Louis C.K. also did this in Oh My God. Oh shit, god damn it! There's always fucking cheetahs at the train station! Stop it! 
Note that Kevin Hart does a similar thing in Irresponsible, but the audience is too far away. You can't see their reactions, so he has to use cutaways anyway. My kids are getting older. Dave Chappelle also films his specials really well. He uses slightly smaller venues, tiered seating, and a projected stage, so you're constantly getting live reactions. He still uses cutaways. This one really bugs me. <laughs> but on the whole, you feel like you're right in the room with the audience. But it wasn't no goddamn Michael Jackson, was it? However, the comedian who has filmed his specials most consistently is 41st best stand-up ever and Santa Claus if he let himself go, Stuart Lee. Throughout his career, Stuart Lee has always given a completely authentic experience of how the material worked in the room. In 90s Comedian, he uses cutaways, but they always feel like genuine reactions. Some are laughing, others are mixed, others seem embarrassed at Lee's very existence. In more recent specials, particularly Stuart Lee's comedy vehicle, Lee always finds angles that get himself and the audience in the same shot. I wanted to shoot across the acts so that you see an audience response in real time. Uh -huh. right? There's not a breaking of the rhythm to yeah. the uh, thing. And I've always done that. I've done it all through comedy vehicle. There are no breaks for reaction shots. For a point of comparison, here's Stuart Lee at Just For Laughs in 2006. And she said she was almost certain that it wasn't. But by then it was too late. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but the... Note how the cutaway seems false and breaks the momentum of the joke. Whereas here... Is it just me? Or did Asher D from the So Solid crew and Grange Hill he was in when he was young? <laughs> did he just suggest without any degree of irony that he is the new Jesus? <laughs> you still get the reaction, but in a completely authentic way. The more you watch Stuart Lee, the more you'll see this technique employed. When he wants a reaction, he'll cut wide but keep himself in the shot. <laughs> in specials like 41st Best Stand-Up Ever, he's down at the audience's level, so you're constantly getting live feedback. <laughs> Even in Content Provider, where Lee is on a front-facing stage above the audience, the camera is placed side-on to get the joke and the reaction at the same time. Look at these people. This isn't my crowd, is it? Look at that. Essex. Essex filth. The people that are... <laughs> market traders on the run from London, aren't they? <laughs> And most importantly, when Lee is on a stage where he can't get to the audience, he just leaves them alone. Carpet Remnant World is a brilliant example of stand-up that is wonderfully filmed without getting the audience involved. At least not visually. Going well down here, isn't it, but up there? There's people down here thinking, oh, it's the kind of thing he does, and mucks about like this, it'll be all right. And up there, there's people going, oh, he doesn't... I've not seen him before, he doesn't seem to be able to do stand-up. <laughs> I can, I can do it really well, actually. What you end up with is a completely honest impression of what it was like to be there in the room. As a viewer, you feel like part of the audience, which, for the most part, is a great thing. One thing that you should remember is that the notion behind the cutaway is actually a good one. You want to get the audience involved. And while many comedians have gotten rid of the cutaway, they also haven't really replaced it with anything. Instead, they perform on these empty stages that are lacking in the atmosphere an audience can provide. So if I had any advice, it would be get the audience involved. Change your stage or your camera angles capture the experience of being in the room. And if you want to film your special on a big stage, go for it. Just don't use cutaways. John Mulaney's Kid Gorgeous and Bill Burr's Paper Tiger are two recent examples of stand-up that works exactly because of its scale. They don't have cutaways and they don't need any. Comedians have to trust that we know what's funny. Or, at the very least, don't force reaction out of us because we're not going to fall for it. Hey, Howard, did you see that? <gasps> the 
doesn't matter what colour background it's on, it's still a stamp. There's no stamps there. There are stamps there. Look, I, would not, I wouldn't have given this to you if it was wrong, would I? Because it obviously leads into the rest of what I'm trying to talk about. So I wouldn't have handed you something that didn't support the following hour of the show. The problem was you didn't get your uh, free coffee, which is because you had only had seven stamps. No, I got... This is just appalling. This is, this is my one chance, mate, to film this. And you... <laughs> You're two stamps short of a coffee. No, I'm not. <laughs> It's because they're blue. <laughs> <laughs>